I'm Chief Parakeet of uh, Paracosm. I, uh, I'm relatively new to the Boston area, just about one year here. We're actually a Florida-based startup, and we've been around since 2013. And everyone always asks why I moved to Boston. You know, we're, we're uh, backed by Atlas and Accomplice in Cambridge, and we're actually um, iRobot's first uh, corporate uh, investment. So that's kind of our, one of our many claims to fame. And what we do is we digitize reality. So paracosm, the word means imaginary world, like paranormal cosmos. And what we developed, we spent the past three years developing, is a system to transform the physical space we're in into perfect virtual reality models. So before I dive into the fun demo, um, I'm going to show, I'm going to get a little off script, and I'm going to show a video that was released yesterday from another company that's also based in Florida, and um, I'm not going to show this whole video, It's, uh, but we'll skip to a few really important parts. And what you're seeing is the future. <laughs> so there's this new wave of technology coming that is going to seamlessly overlay, effectively, holograms into our physical environment. So this is a company in um, South Florida, it's a PR drive from an office called Magic Leap, and they've developed you know, this, uh, this new type of, I can only describe it as technology because it's all under heavy NDA, I've seen the demo in person. And what it effectively does is it recreates the experience of seeing physical objects, but virtually, if that makes sense. So we can now, this new wave of technology is coming that is allowing us to place virtual objects, holograms, into the physical space with us. And this has many profound implications for the next generation of, of computing, right? Like, like right now, if we're, if, you know, the 90s were the era of the desktop and the early 2000s were the era of, you know, maybe the laptop, we're currently in the age of smartphone tablets. You know, starting in five years from now, your phone in your pocket, you know, gone, done. You know, the tablet, done. TV, done. Everything is going to be some form of head-mounted display that is going to overlay the digital world you see onto your physical reality. So what Paracosm has done is, um, I'll skip the boring details, but we, uh, we, do, we, we have a team of uh, about 20 people, 15 engineers, four of them computer vision PhDs, and we've developed software that can take video from next generation mobile devices and transform that video into these 3D models of reality. And so you can see here our software is at work and we built a 3D model of this apartment. And what's really exciting about that, and now I'll just try to do a little segue here. We'll, we'll, we'll kind of see how this is going to work here. Yeah, there we go. And so, what this, what this does is the, the model that we saw in front of you, right, previously, we now have this perfect 3D representation of this apartment. And you can see, I'll, I'll turn the, the colors off to help you see, we've captured all the detail of the room. It's not perfect, but we have the full dimensions, this fully accurate 3D model of space that we can now use to let our to let our devices know what the shape of the room looks like. And so you can see here, once we've aligned the, the world, now I can, in my apartment, place King Kong in my house right next door to me. And of course, King Kong here, um, you can see King Kong lives, you know, lives uh, in this digital world, but it seamlessly overlays to reality. So what our software does is we, by digitizing reality, we give machines the ability to completely live and understand in the same environment. So now you can tell your Roomba, hey Roomba, I have a 3D map of my house, why don't you go back in the living room? Roomba understands this now. We can now have our virtual, you know, little Minecraft characters you know, this is our house in the real world. Our little character exists in the virtual world with us. So the 3D model, you know, these virtual balls bounce off 
the tables. I mean, you know, we can, to some extent, I'll skip ahead with my last few seconds, you know, this works outdoors too. You can see the outside of our office, we just bounce all these little virtual balls off of, off of our office there. And of course, that's what we do. The secret is the ability to build these perfect 3D models of reality. And with that, I believe I am out of time. <laughs> So right now it takes us, we do all cloud-based processing, so you upload a video and that apartment took about four hours of processing in the cloud. So the question is what tool are you using to scan it? And the, um, it's a, it's a device very similar to like a Microsoft Connect called a depth sensor. You can see some examples here. You know, PrimeSense, it basically it works like with an infrared laser. It projects invisible laser room and it lets the camera sense in 3D. PrimeSense was acquired by Apple for $360 million two years ago. Intel is working on something called the RealSense. Google's developing a tablet called the Tango. So next generation devices are gonna have depth perception built in. Building for any specific hardware, for instance, uh, HoloLens? Um, so we're basically building for everything except HoloLens. So Ho <laughs> HoloLens, Microsoft kind of, you know, gave us the cold shoulder. They're, they're developing their own version in-house, but we're developing for every other platform. Yeah. Uh, what's the price point, and how does it differentiate between the uh, 16 Pro Pro? <laughs> yeah, so... The price point, we're still figuring that out. You know, the the you know, I'm light on business model details because the market currently for this tech is uh, exactly zero dollars, right? This this market does not exist, and the estimated growth is it's going to reach trillions of dollars within a very short amount of time. You know, like that company Magically, as an example, has you know they started two or three years ago and they've had about six hundred million dollars invested in them to date. You know, Oculus of course acquired was acquired by two for $2 billion. So the, uh, there's no market yet, but the, everyone's betting that this is the next uh, platform for computing. And then um, just, yeah, like the, the, how they have the world pros where you have- Yeah, so then the, the question is how does this differ from you know, stereoscopic virtual reality rigs like the GoPro or the Jaunt or you know, the Google Spot, whatever. And um, it's because we actually are capturing the physical dimensions of the space. So it's not, it's not meant to be consumed. Um, you know, if you look, I'll pull out this uh, tape measure device to illustrate, you know, you can see we, we captured the actual physical structure of the room, which is critical for placing the virtual objects. So in terms of uh, creating an uh, image like that, how much uh, data point uh, that you need to uh, capture? So this, this, yeah. Once you finish processing, if you find the resolution is not enough, can you sort of uh, go back, capture more data? In, uh, yeah. Late, uh, yeah, so all you need to do is pass one of these sensors over the space you're capturing. So then the question is, how do we know we've captured the space and can we go back? And the answer is yes, you just grab it. It's just like taking a video of the room. And if you miss a spot, you can just go back later. We're working on user interfaces so you can capture in real time. Can you identify features like the chair or whatever? Yeah, so the, the holy grail, where this is all going and what we do not have working yet, it's the next frontier, is to be able to have entire spaces digitized and analyzed so that if you walk down, if you walk in your living room, you want your robot to know, hey, that's a couch. Or if you walk into a grocery store, you want to say, hey, show me gluten-free items. And every gluten-free item on the shelf jumps out at you. Or, you know, your favorite character walks you through the store to like, you know, the carry part like, hey, follow me to the you know merchandise section. Mm -hmm. The drill of the Google is animation. Is it different the animation part than the than the room dimension part? Yeah, it's a really good question. So the question was, what's what's the, the connection between the these fun animations and the room? Is our team? We actually have two halves of our team. We have two engineering squads. One is a computer vision team that develops the system that does the 3D mapping, and the other is an augmented reality team that effectively develops the game experience. And 
What links them is a another piece of uh, software we're building that you know when you have, once you have a map, the first question you ask yourself is where am I in the room? So this is the map. We have a piece of software that we're developing. So it's very complicated that lets us say now that I have a map, where am I standing in the room? And once we have those two pieces of information, the map where I'm standing, you can hand it off to a game developer, 3D animators, and to create these experiences. Last yeah, that's going to be one of the major frontiers for this. Is you know we're we're maybe not best positioned for that, but all these headset makers are really betting big on a uh, AR assisted uh, surgery. Okay, one more question, sir. How do you deal with uh, reflective or transparent? Surgery? It doesn't work. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, thank you very much. Thanks.